Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. Today we have the new Mantic Kings of War Vanguard Abyssal Dwarf Warband set with 14 miniatures because we know how to count. So, what do we have in store for us? I'm not exactly sure. I do know that this is the first instance where we've had the Warband predate the actual army. So we should have 10, I want to say, plastic models. I'm going to guess that it's, I don't know, I don't want to guess. Maybe three and one, since it's 10 of these. So six, I don't know, I'm just making numbers up. And then we're supposed to have some resin guys as well. Let's stop talking, put down the camera, and take a look inside. I am quite curious to see what these sprues look like. And I better not forget my mantic points. Okay. These are the 25 millimeter bases, not the 20s. Resin dudes. Piles of cards. Always nice to have. Random base. More random base. Okay. I don't know why there's extra random bases. I'm assuming those are for the resin models and maybe the dogs. Let's see what's on the sprue. I'm going to tear it open. Now they are the same, so I'm not going to bother showing both. What do we have in store for us here? Hmm. Okay, that's an interesting touch. So we have the shields are actually molded to the hands. Interesting. I'm assuming these are the rifles. Mm, I'm not sure. You do have the empty right hand to go with the two-handed weapons, I believe. Pointy hand. Whole lot of heads. A whole lot of heads. But that's a good thing. We need lots of heads if we're going to be building armies and warbands and whatnot. And you do get two doggies on a sprue here. So I'm guessing it's five models. Where's the bodies? Oh, <laughs> okay. I guess they're not the same sprue. I shouldn't just be quiet. Here we go. Okay, so we actually have what looks to be five repeated sculpts for the bodies. They're all one piece. Again, hands are molded to the shields. More hand weapons, more guns, more shields. No more heads on this one, though. I do like that we have the arms that correspond to the guns molded right next to them. And I gotta say, this is some of the crispest, cleanest... I'm knocking over my camera. Plastic I have seen out of Mantic, and I've been there since the beginning. Yeah, this is really nice. Kudos to Mantic. Seriously, honestly, truly, thumbs up. I mean, after the North... Min... What were they called? North Clansmen? Whatever. Northkin Raiders? I don't remember. The Parka Dudes. <clears throat> Those were really nice, but I gotta say, this is even a step up from them. Just the details. On the shields. The weapons. How many heads do we end up with here? Let's find out. Got a couple uh, unhelmeted ones. So two, three, four, five... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 different heads. I don't know what this is. At least 12 heads, for sure. And I don't think any of those are repeats either, so that's even cooler. Definitely a lot of choices there. And you know what would be interesting is if these are actually compatible with the old hybrid metal resin ones, or plastic, rustic, whatever. I doubt it though. So those are the plastic sprues. We'll get them built and see how they look compared to some of the older Mantic dwarves. I don't have any abyssal dwarves. I do have regular dwarves. Alright, here's our... Is this the sharpshooter guy? Can't complain about the quality of Mantic's current resins either. Very crisp, very clean, and easy to work with. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the same caster who's been doing Shield Wolf stuff. I don't know why I think that. I could be totally wrong. Just grabbing a Shield Wolf model here. 
I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Not that that's a bad thing or anything. I'm just rambling on. I thought I had a mantic dwarf nearby. I do. Just out of curiosity. Well, we know what you're dealing with here. So they look to be a little bit bigger. I don't know if that's going to be a deal breaker for some of you out there. Maybe. The scale's all wrong. I can't do it. I don't care about scale. And our leader, because he's got the biggest hat. Oh, I wonder if I have any of those old Russian alternative ones still. Interesting wire work going on there. Hmm. Big hammer. Nicely detailed. A little warped, but eh, it's okay. And then I'm guessing these are his arms. His pneumatically assisted strength. I don't know. Look good though. So I'm going to grab those clippers and glue. We'll put them together. We'll get all of the dwarves, everybody, and the little doggies put together. We'll see how they stack up to some of the other stuff we got laying around. All right, hold tight. So check it out, we got our abyssals all put together here, I shouldn't say abyssals, abyssal dwarves. So we're taking a look right now at the close combat build. There are the older models, and they did have a separate card, I want to say they were the Black Soul Immortals. I could be wrong, I don't have the cards in front of me right now, but I do know that there was a designation between the new guys and the old uh, hybrid models. So... You could probably, you know, just hand wave that away if you're going to run these as either or, but... I gotta say, construction was so much easier than the last few models I built. Things went off the sprue quite quickly. If you've noticed, I've had a lot of Conquest models up. I've been really enjoying Parabellum stuff. But it's been a pain in the butt having to clean those models off to get them even prepped for putting together. It's just been a real pain. These guys, not so much. Nice, quick, efficient, and Having been with Mantix Plastics almost from the very beginning, I think I first really came in contact with Mantic when Dwarf King's Hold came out and the plastic dwarves that were in there. And I gotta say, just everything continues to improve. It may not be as noticeable on camera as it is in person, but just the folds and the delineations and the, the armor, really impressive, especially knowing where Mantic started and just the leaps and bounds in terms of quality. These guys all have cloth armor. Okay. There's one dude who had like... That's the one. Let's see if I can get that in focus. You can see like the just really fine mesh of his armor there on the lower part of his tabard. Just really nice. Really nice looking models. I gotta say, I, I'm really impressed with this. I've been disappointed with some of Mantic's plastics in the past, to be honest. Uh, one of the ones I was really looking forward to, the Salamanders, just I thought it was really hard to discern where things began and ended on the models. And not so with these guys, despite my cruddy glue job. I think the details really still come through. And I do appreciate the fact there is not a single head repeat on any of these models at all. Now, obviously, there's some that are close, but... The fact that just even straight out of the box for at least a Vanguard unit, where everybody's going to end up looking different, you've got five different gun variations, of, I think even more close combat variations on weapons and shields. Uh, if you didn't notice, you have both left-handed and right-handed options, so that's nice just to mix things up for variants. You have plenty of guys with guns at the ready, Guns marching, and then we have also a model that we can have refilling his gun. So I'm going to use that as some kind of a weeder type model. I don't think the marksman had a special distinction as opposed to the old and new versions of the close combat guys. But then there's also the big giant mutant doggies, and they're pretty big. Getting one in focus there. I mean, they're not like the little puppies that the regular dwarves have with them. So, we already have... I, I went the easy way. I did 5 and 5, just so I have a little bit of variation. And it's not like I don't have plenty of other dwarves to pull from if I need extra models 
if I want to mix things up a bit more in the future. But you get five of each if you want to go that way, two of the doggies, and then you also have the two resin leader models. So you have your Ktushchen or whatever it's called, the rocket launcher guy here. And again, Mantic's really stepped up the quality. Not only their plastic, but their resin stuff has been a real joy to work with, too. Everything I've painted up lately of theirs in resin, it just, it's been quick, it's been fun, and it hasn't been a pain like I can say some of the other models I usually deal with are. So, really simple. He's ready to rock it. <laughs> and then you have your leader whose name is escaping me at the moment, because like I said, I don't have the cards handy. Almost a throwback to the old Abyssal King model who was in the big powered armor with the big sold shoes. It doesn't seem as obvious on this guy. He might be wearing platform extenders as well. I like this guy, though. He's big. I'm surprised he's actually on a 20 millimeter base. I would have expected him to be on a 25, but, you know, it's not like it's a big deal. You could totally model it that way. Heck, you can put them on a pla plastic. A round base. Yeah, you can do plastic bases, too, because that's what they're on. But... Really, I think of all the Vanguard sets that I've built, and I've built a few, I know I haven't put them all up here yet, but probably this one is my favorite so far, and the only way I think that's going to be outdone is if we see the Goblins get a new one with the upgraded modernized plastics, or if we ever see a plastic Ogre one. I know we have Ogres coming in some shape or form, probably resin, probably with the older Rustic models, thrown in for boomers and whatever the close combat guys were called but to me i mean this is really a step in the right direction for somebody who isn't as excited about the prospect of painting piles and piles of guys necessary for a rank and file mass combat system but still really enjoy the quality and the designs that mantic's been putting out and you know i've been there like i said since dwarf king's hold come came out I really like what I'm seeing, and I'm, I'm hoping for even more of this in the future. So definitely kudos to them in that regard. You've really stepped it up. Really impressive looking models here. And the question that always is on everybody's mind is how are they going to stack up with other stuff out there? Well, I don't have any of the old hybrid models. I grabbed an old, older, I should say, traditional plastic mantic dwarf. And then I grabbed a more modern mantic dwarf so if you wanted to be weird and go kit bash them all together i mean their armor is not like as inherently chaosy evil looking as you know the gw ones were but i'm sure you could probably mix something up there let's see what other ones a modern mantic human i thought i had a basilian nearby but it doesn't seem like it i must have put them away all right, well, let's see what other dwarves we've got. I've got a Durgan's Paint Forge model. Those are some fun sculpts. I really dig their stuff. A actual abyssal. Let's see, we've got is that Ragnar or something from that's like a Keltos model, I think. I just grabbed. I was trying to grab a GW one. I'm like, okay, well, we'll put a GW one in there too. So again. Really nice overall look here. I uh, got a couple other dwarves handy. An unpainted privateer. Ruick. Uh, Stonehaven. So I think if you're looking for doing a lot of dwarven kit bashes or you want to just mix them in with other dwarves you got, I think they're a really good mix. I'm going to have to try to find a way to squeeze in my uh, Dwegholm stuff from Conquest. Yeah, maybe it's an abyssal golem or something. They're just they're they're big crazy models. On the other hand, though, the actual golem things that they have in conquest probably are a better choice. <laughs> this is a ridiculous model too. Anyway, overall, I gotta say they're really fit to mesh in with a lot of the other stuff on the market. They are looking good on their own, and as I'm filming this, I saw that the actual Kings of War sets, so if you want big piles of these and an actual army, they're going to be coming out in just about any day, hopefully with the uh, mail actually still delivering. We'll see them getting into people's hands as well. So again, really nice looking set, and kudos to Mantic for really kicking up the quality, especially you know seeing where they came from in their humble beginnings. 
especially with the Abyssal Dwarves, because they were just a rehash of the original Dwarves, it's really refreshing to see them come to fruition like this, and hopefully we'll see something similar, whoa, with the Twilight Kin. So with that said, this is High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Say thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.